from Temple University, this is Profiles in Literature, featuring interviews with authors and illustrators prominent in American literature for children. The moderator for this series is Dr. Jacqueline N. Schachter, Professor of Children's Literature with Temple University. It comes as no surprise to learn that we are featuring Miss Pura Belpre. Bienvenida. Gracias. We share illustrations from four of her books. Those by Carlos Sanchez were for Perez and Martina, whom you will soon meet as puppets. Those by Paul Galdon were from another Puerto Rican folktale, Ote, which is about a peasant and the devil. Those by Christine Price were for Juan Bobo and the Queen's Necklace, the tale of a country boy who discovers jewels no one else could find. Lastly, those by Simeon Shimon were for an original book, Santiago, the story of a black and Puerto Rican child in New York City. My name is Jacqueline Schachter. I'm at Temple University, and I have the pleasure of introducing some other guests. The head of the Foreign Language Division of the Philadelphia School S District, Mrs. Eleanor Sandstrom. She is also co-director of the Bilingual Institute, which trains bilingual teachers for Philadelphia public school jobs. Participating with us in the student body are a number of people from the Bilingual Institute, some students of children's literature, and two students from the Triple T program, trainers of teacher trainers. From the Philadelphia School District, the head of the English department, Mrs. Marjorie Farmer. And last but far from least, Mrs. Carolyn Field, the director of the Office on Work for Children of the Philadelphia Free Library, co-sponsor with Temple of this series of videotapes on important children's authors and illustrators. Ms. Belpre, you have put into English a number of Puerto Rican folk tales, but have you translated into Spanish for Spanish-speaking youngsters or put into Spanish in your own words some important English stories? Well, I, yes, I have, and um, my selecting them had nothing to do with it. Uh, the request came from the publishers. They are the ones who select the books they want translated. And they are, I think they go by the popularity of the book. Really, I think is that they're afraid to do anything which they're going to lose money. So therefore, they use a title that has sold and is still selling well. And they take a chance. That's what I have to say. They take a chance. But I am very glad of the titles that they have selected. They are truly popular and good. My very, very first one was Ferdinand, and I, I could hardly believe it that a thing like this could come to me, because I adore that book. And if to be part of it in any little way, then in those days I was very much in love with Viking Press. I thought that there was no other publisher but Viking Press. And to be uh, this Puerto Rican, from the little town of Sidra in Puerto Rico, one of the tiniest little towns in my country, and connected with this book to me, this, this was so great. And I have enjoyed it immensely. The book has been used as a record. Um, I am so sorry that we, when I say we, I mean where I work from, the New York Public Library, we could not buy this recording uh, of my translation of Ferdinand because they went to town with sound effects. And we don't go for things like that. If they had just told the story uh, simply as it has been told, and with the questions, I know that it's for education, they have to have these questions, but there is so much sound effect that you lose the story. And so we, we felt very sorry, but we, don't, we didn't buy the record. What other titles have we you I then, um, I had the good luck of being asked to do six of the titles of the I Can Read books for Harper's and Rowe, and there was that beautiful one of Little Bear. They are again, you see? I mean, this is just terrific. And, and all the other titles that are along with it. 
Then from that came a book that's very, very popular with us in the New York Public Library. And that is the story of the dog who wanted a boy, oh, I thought. Yeah. And it's a, it's a Christmas story. And the, the children, the parents, the Puerto Rican parents, I mean, they just love that book. And that also has come from there. Then um, Grosset and Dunlap got very much interested in doing something for the Head Start group. And I have done six books for them, six titles for them. And these are books that are aimed at the supermarkets <laughs> and the five and tens. <laughs> and I have come across people in New York City, I mean, of all places, the League of Women <laughs> Voters uh, had for the first time in history, in its history, we have a Spanish chapter. And we went there to the opening of the Spanish chapter and this lady who was on the, on the dais came coming to me and she said, I have to give you a kiss. I said, what for? She said, I went to the five and 10 on 70 something street and here I'm breaking my head to look something for my boy that, you know, he would not forget the Spanish. And I come across and I look twice, I didn't believe it. And she has seen the books there. So she bought two of those titles. So look for them. They're very inexpensive. They're very well done. I mean, they're good stories. Uh, uh, I had nothing to do with the selecting of them, but they're good titles and they translate beautifully. They really do. And, and, and then they're inexpensive. It, it reminded me of, of um, little uh, Steptoe, who said to me, I, uh, we were in a panel together and he said to me, uh, I said, we share um, the same publisher, you know. So then he, he said to me, well, I, I'm very sad because um, I wrote that book for the children who can't buy it. It's oh. too expensive, he said. Oh. So I thought of this, you know, so many mothers, they go around. And so those little titles are there. And um, Western Woods, you've done some I, I have done two wonderful things for Western Woods. I came to Western Woods really as a consultant. They, someone had translated something for them in Spanish, and they were not certain. And, but they were beautifully done. And they, I never knew they were done in Puerto Rico at the time. But they were done, and they were beautifully done. Ping is one, and, and other titles. But then they asked if I would do for them, um, for a film uh, strip, Wistful for Willie, and... Um, Goggles. No, 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 no Snowy no. Day. It's snowy a Snowy day. day. I don't know when those will come out, but they are in Spanish. And I think, I think it's going to be wonderful. Will this be just a uh, film and the film strip and the record and everything that I don't goes know with what it? Else, you know? I don't know what else there'll be. The book? I don't know. Uh, but I know that the, uh, I have done the film strip for them. And uh, it should be out soon because they have sent me, uh, you know, the last thing that's for the captions, the things, the things that go before the whole thing starts. So I imagine pretty soon it'll be in the market. But I, I was there again. I'm so thrilled because I just love those books. So that it's, uh, I've had such a good this year has been a translator's year. <laughs> this year has been the first time in my life that I have had three stories returned. And one of them, a little original that you speak of there. Well, no, I tell you, in a way, uh, I'm sorry, because f with one of these manuscripts, I have struggled a great deal with them. And it came in such a beautiful way. Uh, I came to Washington for the um, State Library uh, convention and to speak about my work and uh, my staff was Margaret Bates and when she came from Brazil she said to me I've made you popular all over <laughs> <laughs> so she comes and she brings me this great big manuscript and she said Brazilian stories do anything you want with them and I have struggled with those things I mean I you know they're so wonderful and then um, I went to a library meeting and I met the consul general of Brazil. And she was talking, and in her talk on the characters of different authors, she mentioned that so many of these characters were uh, almost featured from the folklore, heroes of them. And, and I just sat there straight because it, she mentioned one that I just finished doing the story that morning. Uh -huh. So when the whole thing was over and we were drinking Brazilian coffee, I told her about this manuscript. She could hardly believe it. You have them, she said. Will you please do me the honor, says she of letting me read them. So I took the stories to her, and she wrote a beautiful letter. She said, uh, she, she said she had, I made her feel so lonely for Brazil, and that these are the stories that she grew with, you know. And then she said, uh, 
if if uh, this is such a good translation that I am so glad that at last the children in America are going to have a chance to read the stories. And I can get a publisher to get those stories. Yeah. They keep going, they uh -huh. keep coming. And you know, it's, uh, I, I'm always talking about them, you know, at, uh, in Atlantic City, I talked to a publisher and she was very much interested. Please send them, she wrote me when I came back. Don't forget, don't forget, and here comes the manuscript. I, I think is, you see, they are, they are, people are so different. It, it, it's like, uh, for instance, like, like Perez and Martina. Um, they're used to just one type of storytelling. And, and as I said, this, these are so different. They're, all the publishers said, oh, I love that, send me some more. And then don't send any more, and I'll finish the collection and send it to me. And then something happens in between, and they say, well, these are wonderful for a journal of folklore. And, but others say, they said, you know, there's so much cruelty in some of them. These are animals of the jungle in Brazil, and you have to struggle to live. So one thing with the other, and that's one of the manuscripts that came back for the full time. So now Margaret, where is Margaret? I keep feeling all these things to her. Margaret, um, when she came from Brazil, went to teach Spanish and Portuguese the, at the, um, at the um, Catholic University in Washington. And then she said she was getting so mixed up between the two languages, she dropped the, she dropped the Portuguese and she's sticking to Spanish, and that's what she's doing there, you see? So then uh, I always keep telling her, I said, Margaret, here goes one more chance, and, uh, and this will be the last time, but I have such faith in these stories that I think maybe someday, you know, someday someone will see something in a book, because that's, it's no use. You know, my husband used to say, darling, is that you're so in love with Viking Press. Forget Viking <laughs> Press and all the publishers. She said, do like I do. My husband was a, an outstanding, um, composer musician. and a musician and, and maybe some of you have known of him or know of him dr clarence cameron white and he um said look what i do darling i send this music all over but not soon as it comes back i always have another place to send it because not two people have the same idea and it's true he's right he's very right but it's uh, so then you know uh, the other day when we went to we went over to uh, the um, children's symposium and were you there not that Almost you. every story, every story was a story of a king and a queen. I mean, there was no variety for the first time. And I said to myself, hmm, uh -huh. I have, you know, for the last four months, I have this thing, this staff has read it, and so forth and so forth. Even one publisher, a friend of mine, went to lunch, and I took it, read it to her. She called me about two months ago. She said, that story that you read to us in, you know, in the French restaurant, you know, it, it, it's so funny. I mean, there." Uh, when she found out it was not a folk tale, she washed her hands off. Uh -huh. So, anyhow, so then I send it. Maybe you um, should tell her what the symposium is. I, I, to this one, I said, it was, it was uh, you know, the amount of storytelling that was done about kings and queens, and from my own experience, What's and now how the children loved it. So I said, now, let me, well, this is, a, this is the first time I do one of those uh, fantasies, and I just wanted to see, I, I, I believe a great deal about these people. And I say that, you, you learn a lot, and I don't know whether they do this with every uh, manuscript that comes back, but there's always something in my rejection slips that I have learned. Sure, you know, if they say anything. Learn, yes, that's it. And then they always say, you know, they don't close the door, they say, let us see anything else that you may have. Or they say, we have, um, it, it, we, I'm not superstitious. I, I, um, for instance, or they might say, we don't have, uh, we are, we are uh, filled up for this year. But there are such possibilities of this, and this will make such a magnificent blah, 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 blah. Will you please let us keep it? We have no right to do this, because this will be a year. And you sit there and you say, well, what to do? Shall I send, begin the round, or shall I hold on to this first? What's a year? Nothing, right? So, this is the same publisher to whom I sent Santiago, I said, see how you like this. This is my very first ori original story. And came back the word, we'll keep it. <laughs> so when Frederick Warren says, let us keep this thing, and they took just one out and kept everything else. And this one, with a very lovely idea here again. The only reason they sent it back, because I said this was, this was a hero tale and did not fit with the other ones. Well, do you see the opening? 
I'm dying to go back to Puerto Rico. In fact, I have three or four authors lined up to see if I get permission from them to use some of those stories, because this, this is a folk tale. I mean, this is a, a folk, um, it's a hero tale, but it's based on, the, on, the, uh, on our roots. And there's so much there that is needed now in schools that all the teachers have been asking me for it. So you see, it's not that they refused it. In fact, they gave me one more uh, prize said to me because she read it. She said, whether Frederick Warren ever does this book or not, whoever does it, let me be part of it. Oh, that's So that's you see, there's something in the story, and I said it doesn't make any difference when somebody, one of these days, I sent that not the story not long ago to another person that I, I think a whole lot of it. And she said, I learned so much. This is so new. But really, it's too old for the usual story. So the, you see, these are the things that are so important that come to you. And, and you don't get discouraged because um, maybe something better will you, come. You are holding in your lap some guests. My children. When I went to library school and began to tell stories, and I couldn't find a thing from Puerto Rico. And all these stories in my head, you know, that I knew as a child. So then I went to the library and I asked if they would give me permission to use some of the stories in my story hour. And they said, yes, tell the children that these are original stories, stories that you knew, but that maybe someday they'll be lucky enough to read them in book form. And so that's how it began. But this one went further. This is the story that I read, like you told me, the, the, your students are writing, Original right? Book. So we were told to write a story. And I said, well, why break my head? I'll do one of the ones I know. And this is the, was the very first one that came to my mind. And I did Perez and Martina for the class. I read it. Let's live today. I read it. Uh, I mean, I wrote it and read it to the class. And that was it. It's a simple story. It, it is a story that came original from Spain. And maybe I shouldn't even say that. Because five years ago, I picked up this Saturday Review of Literature. And here was Alice Daglish reviewing a collection of Persian fairy tales. And in that collection, she says, is a story of Mistress Little Cockroach, which she says is nothing else but put, but put up a press, Perez and Martina. And uh, you see, so what right do I have to say mm. that this came from Spain? Except that to Spain came the literature of the world for centuries and centuries under the Arabs, and through them, all this glorious richness of folk folklore. So anyhow, Martina came to Puerto Rico with the conquistadores. And in that trip, she lost her identity. In Spain, she is La Rumiguita, the little black ant. is the only place where Perez and Martina remains as it was. It's La Rumiguita y el ratoncito Perez. But when the conquistadores took off to, to the new world, don't ask me how. Maybe there were so many cockroaches that they were impressed, <laughs> so that uh, La Hormiguita disappeared, and the cockroach came in. And so everywhere you hear about uh, the story. And it's the same story, except with little, little turns that often happens to folklore. Uh, with, with La Cucarachita, it's mostly the food that they prepare for Perez. Uh, in Puerto Rico, we have the, our Christmas dish, arroz con dulce. That's what she pick, fix, fixes for him. In Mexico, los frijoles. I have a version of a cucarachita story done by one of the uh, ladies from the embassy, a Cuban lady. And in her, uh, naturally, she cooks los frijoles negros, uh, which are and so it goes from one to the other. The story is the same. Perez, for some reason or other, is always left alone, either to do something, like in Mexico, he's supposed to stay and watch the pot and not stir it with a long spoon, not with a short spoon, but with a long ladle. And the same thing happened. He loses the balance because he wants something else and falls. Uh, then uh, when, when uh, Ampulaski last year went uh, telling stories, she told Perez and Martina in Costa Rica, in a lot of places in Spanish, and they said to her, but, but why so short? You see, they go back to the Spanish version, which is longer, but it's not longer in the story. The story, Perez falls and everything. The, the thing in Spain is that when Martina sits on her balcony, all dressed in black, playing her guitar and singing, 
El ratoncito Pérez cayó en la olla y la cucaracha Martina lo canta y lo llora, lo canta y lo llora, lo canta y lo llora, lo canta y lo llora. It ends there, you see, as it says in my book, and to this day she still sings, she still plays, she still sighs for her parents to come back to her. In Spain, she's singing that, and then a whole array of different little animals come, and they ask, why is she crying? Because Perez fell in the pot and she cries and sings. Then if it's a dog, the dog said, well then, I'll cut off my beak. Or a pigeon will say, I'll cut off my uh, wing. It's a whole list of mutilations. Can you see me selling anything like this in America? Well then, the last one who comes is the Infanta. And the Infanta, for no reason whatever, comes with a jug to get some water. And she asks, and she gets all this. Don't, then she says, well then, I will break my, my jog, and that's how it ends in Spain. And that's what those children in Latin America were waiting for, you see. Where is Perez? Perez is here. This is, of course, Martina as a housewife. And, um, and then when she finds, the, when she finds uh, the coin, which is, after she cleans it, it is a peseta. Then, like a true woman, she begins to think what to buy with it, and naturally, the first thing is a new dress. But then she remembers she has had one new dress made to order, and though she wants to know, she thinks some more, and she said, well, I had a dress made to order not long ago. Perhaps a box of candy. Ah, oh, but candy never lasts me long. What shall I buy with it? And she thinks and thinks, and finally she said, I shall buy a box of powder. So she buys a box of powder, and then she powders her little face as she had not done in a long time. Then she put on her prettiest dress and her prettiest mantilla, and she sits on her balcony. And as she sits there, she begins to think about her friends. And so she says, I wonder if Perethi Mouse will come to visit me today. He's such a gallant little mouse. There's no one who can talk or dance as he does. And we all wonder if Perez had not come from royal descent. Well, then as she sits there, all these animals that you saw before come in. The cat. Buenos dias, señorita Martina. Buenos dias, señor cat. How pretty you look today, señorita Martina. Will you marry me? Or perhaps, as Martina, if you tell me how you would speak to me in the future. Señorita, I will speak to you like this. Meow. 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 Oh, no. Oh, no, said Martina, you will frighten me. I will not marry you. Well, after a while, she has all these things, all this. Then comes the, this, there comes the rooster, the rooster is too loud. There comes the dog, she hears too much of the dog every day, and there's nothing in, in his quacking, no. She will not marry him. And then comes the frog and the cricket. And uh, they both speak at the same time. And Martina, who has such beautiful manners, she can't stand that. No, you cannot speak both at the same time. She gets through with them in no time at all. And she's ready to go when who should come walking but Perez. I have to apologize. I did not bring Perez's hat, and I should have. But I want to tell you something about this puppet. Someone is very mad at me. This puppet should have been today, at this very hour. Post college. Oh. I gave them a list of books. I gave them every every title of my book that's been brought in any other anthology, which I didn't know anything about it. And uh, she transferred the date. She so that's why I got the puppets for you. So then she sees Perez coming, and she sits once more, and she waits for Perez. And when Perez approaches, she bows very low and says, buenos dias, señorita Martina. Buenos dias, señor Perez, says she. Really, you know, as if she had not even been wondering so much about him. And Perez, to show how wonderful he is and really what he stands for, he doesn't abruptly ask her, will you marry me? He says, Mart, it is a beautiful day. Would you take a walk with me in the forest? But Martina says she prefers her balcony. And she invites Perez to come and sit next to her. And Perez goes in. And as he goes in, 
he begins to sing. And this is what he sings. De España un ratoncito soy en una cueva vivo. Puedo por las tardes ver la puesta del sol. A veces veo al rey y a la reina pasar. And he's walking, you see, all around. And by that time, he has come to her balcony. And uh, Perez says to her again, Señorita Martina, for a long time, I've had a question to ask you. Will you marry me? Or perhaps, said Martina, if you tell me how you would speak to me in the future. Señorita, said Perez, I will speak to you in the language of my forefathers, like this. Chui, 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 chui. Oh, how lovely, said Martina. Señor Perez, it sounds just like music. Yes, yes, I will marry you. <laughs> So I, this, this will give you a little taste of what happens. They're lovely. And the last puppet is when she mourns. She yes, says, this, this, is, this, this is after, she, you know, after he had gotten the, arm, the almond that was getting brown all over. And she sits there with her, with her uh, guitar. We have a very elegant uh, announcer, of course, for these puppet shows. And uh, he is the one who helps a lot while scenery changes and all that thing is happening. So, like for instance, at the time, one of the times when Perez is bowing very low and we don't know how in the world it happened, the head just flew out and went right on the, on the lap of somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Things that happen, you know. So this is Martina and she has a guitar and she really, it comes, you know, around her neck and she sits there in the balcony while the announcer is saying, you know, and, uh, and Martina went into her room and she dressed all in black. She took her guitar from her wall and she sat once more in her balcony. And there she began to play and she began to sing and she began to sigh for her little Paris to come back to her. And her little voice was heard all over the place as she sang. And then she sang what I sang to you before, the Ratoncito Perez. And then when she finishes and keeps on strumming her guitar, the, um, the, uh, the curtain closes slowly and he says, and to this day, she still sings, she still plays, she still sighs for her parents to come back to her and closer. This is very popular. I mean, I don't have to tell you, this little story had become a classic in children's literature. And um, it, it's, it's just so wonderful. I, I think that every one of these folk tales that I have written have sold themselves. I mean, I have no agent, I've never had an agent. I just sent, um, I just sent the stories out. You take, for instance, the, the, the uh, Juan Boban de Queensland Glaze went all the way to Italy because uh, Helen Mastin had read the story and liked it, and she thought Marcia Brown li would like it. And so it went to Marcia at the time when Marcia was very, very busy because she was doing Cinderella when they thought Miss Moore was going to die. <laughs> and Juan is my little Juan Bobo, you know? So anyhow, uh, but it came very near to be illustrated of Marcia. May I uh, mention the illustrator, though, of uh, Paris Martina, is Carlos Sanchez. The illustrations are classic, too. They, they're, they're just marvelous. And what about getting him to illustrate some more of your folk tales? Well, um, Carlos, this is a very interesting thing. If you have known how elegant he was, he was not very tall. He was small, but he had something in his mannerisms that make him very tall. And he came home with his pads and his cane and everything. Well, anyhow, uh, the reason he has not illustrated anymore, he did one more book after this. He did the picture text from Spain for Miss Ruth Van oh, yeah. which made Miss Moore very mad because he thought that some of his stories, some of the pictures for her Perez and Martina there are very much like, oh, what difference does it make? I mean, I was, it didn't make me mad. But we have not found this man. I've had, I've lost several stories that Frederick Warren would have published had, he been, had they been able to get him. We don't know. Maybe he died. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure to have the first Puerto Rican librarian and Spanish children's expert for the New York Public Library System. In 1971, she won a plaque from the Bronx, New York Public School District 7 in recognition of her contributions for extending Puerto Rican